Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Here we've got two vectors in 3D space, and as long as these vectors aren't parallel, we should be able to rotate the space so that we can look flatly along both of these vectors. This tells us that two non-parallel vectors actually define a plane in R3. So here you can see if I rotate my view in 3D space again, I'm able to see these two vectors in the plane together. Because of this, we're just going to illustrate in 2D space when explaining the ideas in this video. And those are the ideas of vector projections and scalar projections. So here we've got two vectors, V and W, to make this even easier to see. We'll rotate our view so that W looks horizontal as we're looking at it. If we think about V and its position relative to where W is, and we imagine a light directly above V and W shining down so that V casts a shadow orthogonally onto W, then we get sort of this piece of W or this other vector lying on top of W. We call this the vector projection of V onto W that represents how much vector V points in the specific direction that vector W is pointing in. The abbreviation we use for this in math looks like PROJ of V for projection of V. And then you notice it has a subscript W, which tells us what vector we're projecting V onto. So let's take a look at how we might find this projection of V onto W. Looking at our picture here, we can see this projection is pointing in the same direction as W. And we know vectors that point in the same direction should be multiples of one another. So we know this projection is going to be some multiple of vector w, which we've written here. Now we just need to figure out what that multiple is, right? It turns out it might be a little easier to find just the magnitude of this projection here in our picture, rather than trying to find what multiple of w this projection vector really is. So we'll go ahead and change our formula to say that we know it needs to be some multiple of a unit vector in the direction of w. Now if we can just find the magnitude, that'll give us the rest of the formula. So how long is this projection vector? Well, in this picture, it's the horizontal component of vector v as we're looking at it, right? So we can just figure out that that would have length magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. Theta is the angle between those two vectors. So we've got it. We figured it out. But we can actually make this a bit easier to calculate without needing a calculator and having to do this cosine of theta part. So do you remember another formula for cosine of theta from our previous video in the series? If you remember, the cosine of the angle between the vectors is equal to the dot product divided by the magnitudes of those vectors. So we'll go ahead and put this in there. The nice thing about it is that we can calculate now all of these things here by hand. We don't need a calculator. It looks a little messy still, though, so let's simplify and clean it up a little bit. You probably notice we have a pair of v magnitudes that we can reduce here, yeah. And then we go ahead and we can write this pair of w magnitudes together on the bottom. So a cleaner version of this is really the dot product on top. We've got the magnitude of w squared on the bottom. And remember, since this is in the direction of w, it's all multiplied by vector w as well. So this is our formula for the projection of v onto vector w. Now let's say we're less interested in the actual projection vector itself, but just how much this is pointing in the direction of w, in other words, the magnitude of this. So thinking from our projection of v onto w, what we just found, we're saying instead we just care maybe about the magnitude of this vector instead. So that's just going to be whatever multiple we have of the unit vector in the direction of w, right? So this is the length of the projection vector here, this dot product divided by the magnitude of whatever vector we are projecting onto. This is the magnitude, and this length here actually has its own name. It's called the scalar projection of v onto w. And we abbreviate this in math as COMP, it looks like comp, of v with the same subscript w. Now because this formula for the scalar projection has a dot product on top, then it's actually possible with a dot product that this scalar projection could be negative, right? So let's see what this means and how we interpret that if it happens. So we know from our dot product video that the dot product will be negative when the angle between the vectors is more than 90 degrees. 
So you can see if we illustrate that, the projection vector isn't pointing in the direction of w really anymore. It's pointing in the opposite direction of w. So this scalar projection, if it's negative, is really telling us that the projection vector is a negative multiple of the unit vector in the direction of w. So if we want to be certain that we're finding the actual magnitude of the projection vector, then we really need to find the absolute value of the scalar projection. We're going to calculate some of these in a minute, but we wanted to try and help you keep all these straight in your head. So we've got all the possible ways you might see this here. One way to remember what type of object you're finding is simply in the name of these. So a vector projection, you're finding a vector, and a scalar projection, you're finding a scalar, a real number. In the middle here, these images for each direction of projecting one vector onto the other, you'll just think of running a line perpendicularly toward the vector you are projecting onto. So here from the tip of V perpendicular down onto W, here from the tip of W perpendicular toward V. When you look at your projection formulas, you can see the idea of which vector we are onto at the end of the formula, right? This one's in the direction of W, and this one's in the direction of V. Further keeping these formulas straight, you'll notice that whatever vector you're projecting onto is the vector in the denominator in the formula. So this subscript, W, means onto W, and W is the magnitude in the denominator in our formula here. Here, the subscript is V, meaning onto V, and V is the magnitude in the denominator as well. You can see a similar thing over here with scalar projections as well. Some people say when it's a projection onto W, then their fraction sits on W, and when it's onto V, then their fraction sits on V. So that can be another way to keep these straight in your mind as well. We'll work through a couple of finding projections with you. So if we're given that vector v is 5, negative 2, 1, and vector w is 3, 1, negative 4, here we're being asked to find the projection of v onto w. This is the vector projection of v onto w. And then also this is the scalar projection of v onto w, or some people read this as the scalar component of v in the direction of w. So our projection of v onto w as a vector Remember, that will be the dot product of those vectors. Since we're projecting onto W, we can remember that the magnitude of W squared is what goes in the denominator and also in the direction of W. Okay, so the only time you see V here is actually in the dot product for this one. If we go ahead and figure out some of this stuff in the middle, so our V dot W here, if we look at this, 5 times 3 here, that would give us 15, plus negative 2 times 1 would give us negative 2, 1 times negative 4 would give us negative 4, 15 minus 2 minus 4 tells us the dot product is actually 9 here, so we've got that part down. We'll need the magnitude of w also for sure. So the magnitude of w, remember, will be the square root of all of these components squared and added up. So 3 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 4 squared. This would be 9 and 1, so that would be 10, and another 16 from here. That would give us the square root of 26. So let's go ahead and put all our stuff in here. So our projection is going to be equal to v dot w, which was 9, so that's on the top over the magnitude of w squared. This root 26 was the magnitude of w, so if we square the square root of 26, that will give us just 26 there. And then times vector w, which is 3, 1, negative 4, right? So if we go ahead and take this scalar that we have out front now, times our original vector w, then that will give us 27 over 26, 9 over 26. And then if we do a little bit of reducing, we end up with negative 36 over 26, and we reduce those by 2, so that'll actually be negative 18 over 13 in lowest terms there. All right, so that is our vector that points in the direction of w, but it only points as far as v points in the direction of w. This is our vector projection. For our scalar projection of v onto w, 
remember what we'll do is actually just figure out you could figure out the length of this vector or we can use the formula that we wrote down before which is just going to be the dot product on one of the magnitudes and how do we remember which one we're projecting onto w so it's actually the magnitude of w that is down here so we know already then v dot w is 9 and we know the magnitude of w is root 26 so we actually get 9 over root 26 you could rationalize that if you prefer you could say that is 9 root 26 over 26 if you prefer but we'll go ahead and leave that there we'll go ahead and do one more here we've got new vectors vector v is now 1 comma 4 comma 2 vector w is negative 3 negative 1 0 and you'll notice this time we're actually finding projections of w onto v so this is the vector projection of w onto v this is the scalar projection of w onto v so this one being the vector remember we'll always have our dot product on top for these projections we're projecting onto v this is the vector projection so this is the one that has the magnitude squared in the bottom so projecting onto v means our fraction is on v v squared and it should also be in some direction involving v so we say times vector v there we'll go ahead and figure out our dot product and our magnitude so vector v dot vector w we have 1 times negative 3 so that'll be negative 3 plus 4 times negative 1 gives us negative 4 plus 2 times 0 gives us 0 so we get negative 3 minus 4 that'll give us negative 7 and we'll also need our magnitude of vector v so let's go ahead and find that so remember that will just be the square root of all of these components squared and added up so the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared that would be 1 and 16 and 4. 16 and 4 gives us 20 plus another 1 gives us 21. We get square root 21 here. Let's go ahead and now plug in all our stuff. So our vector projection of w onto v, we're going to have v dot w which is negative 7 divided by magnitude of v squared since magnitude of v is square root 21 then this is just 21 here times vector v which is 1 comma 4 comma 2 you might notice out here this dot product divided by this 21 here this is actually negative 1 third if you reduce that which we'll go ahead and do so distributing 1 third really negative 1 third we get negative 1 third negative 4 thirds and negative 2 thirds for our vector projection of w onto v in this case if we look over at the scalar projection of w onto v that's going to be our dot product divided by the magnitude of the one we're projecting onto so it'll be the magnitude of vector v here and we already have both of these quantities we know that the dot product is negative 7 we know that vector v its magnitude is square root 21 so we could say negative 7 over square root 21. We might also go ahead and say in this case negative 7 root 21 over 21. And if we do that, in this case, notice the 7 over 21 reduces to 1 over 3. And so we would say negative root 21 over 3 in this case if we did it that way. Alright everyone, hopefully this helps you with your vector and scalar projections and keeping everything straight in your mind. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.